Okay. Uh, so here we are back again, um, talking about another uh, Aether Raids defense and uh, how that's going. Uh, for those of you who are, have been more attentive, uh, you know I have my Aether Raids offense video, and, and you can see that I'm in tier 28. Uh, so we made it. We have two hours left. Uh, I still don't think I'm going to be attacked. Um, and let's go see what my rank is. My, so my rank is still what it was when I attacked. Um, the only reason is it's probably going to go down as more people try to squeeze up. Um, or try to like sneak up above and try to get their attacks in and all that kind of stuff. But um, that aside, we'll, you know. Like I said, I, I don't think I can lose enough lift. You can only get attacked once and lose lift once time uh, a day. I don't think I... Even if I do get attacked, I won't be able to go down 28, but I'd like to be in top 2,000. It, it's just a, a nice um, place to be. It just feels nice. Um, but other than that, yeah, so today we're going to go over our defense. And I want to preface this by saying that uh, you can see here I had a lot of successes. And the only one I lost on, I lost 14. Um, there are some failures. There's a failure here, but I got, I, I got saved by the thing there. There's a failure here. There's a failure here, so... What I want to point out is that more than anything else, I really just got kind of lucky this this season uh, that all my losses were caught by the lift loss control, and you know that I had really good you got the easy success easy successes on defense. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was, like I mentioned in the Aether Raids offense video, was talking about um, was talking about how going forward, like this t this season for some reason this week was really strange, where there was just a lot of people up. Where like I was doing, I did my Aether Raids every single day, and then you know I, I was successful on defense uh, every day, and still I was in like fifteen thousandth place like consistently throughout the entire week until only only until today. Uh, if you're, if you saw the Aether Raids video, I started off the day in like almost ten thousandth or something like that, and I was already close to tier twenty six, and then I no I think it was like fifteen thousand, and I got to like tier 26 or 7 or something like that on the first attack and I was still in like 9,000th 9, place and then after I, I made it all the way to tier 28 I got up to 2,000. Um, so it's kind of strange and like I said so I think it was because one Astro is a lot easier so all the people are kind of getting a lot of points so even lower level people are getting high points which means that the the pool around where you're you know doing well uh, there's a lot of people around that bracket and there's a lot of lower you know not as good players down uh, around this position. So it's a combination of, like I said, a lot of luck on my end, as well as um, there was a lot of not that good players uh, around me, where usually they, they are not around me, right? Usually a lot of people, because what I imagine is a lot of people just kind of don't care about staying in uh, tier 20, trying to get to tier 27. A lot of people are fine just as long as they stay in tier 21 so that when it resets, they're in tier 21 like forever. Uh, so I, I imagine there's a lot of those people, but now that the new like Heaven's Arena gate thing is there... Um, a lot of people are trying to like come and rush in forward so there's a huge wave of like people who don't usually participate in Aether Rage trying to get up there so they can coast once again up there at the like 31 or whatever I don't remember what the what the coasting thing is I'm not sure it works that way anymore I think you have to like you have to make it to tier 37 and tier 38 to stay in tier 31 and if you don't you get knocked all the way down to tier 21 so I'm not sure if that theory of why a bunch of people are kind of like coming up is sound because if they didn't really care before it's going to be a lot harder now to, to coast like they were before, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, so let's kind of, let's go through some defenses and we're going to talk about my, uh, my defense and how, you know, what's going on with it and what I need to, uh, what I need to change and, and, and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, so this is my, this is the defense. Uh, you guys, I'm sure you guys have seen it many times already. Um, a lot of you already know what's going on here. Uh, the idea is to funnel them this way. Uh, before, so the reason you can see here, you don't really want fortress tiles on your map because they're too easily exploitable by the enemy. Um, because you just sit there and then not die, right? Um, the idea behind this flyer ball originally was that there was no single unit that could take that much punishment, even if they were on that defense tile, there was no unit that could take that much punishment and not die. Uh, unfortunately, now we have, um... We we're at the point where we have so many units that are so good at doing that, um, and people have have gotten enough merges on them that there is no unit, like that there is units that can take all that punishment, like on the defense tile, pretty easily. One of those, as an example, one of those is Bector. Bector specifically can. Okay. Uh, anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, primarily, um, 
one of the examples of, of a unit that can actually sit on that tile and then just not die ever is going to be um, the the new vector, um, the obviously the refined vector, um, which you know at the time when when this strategy was being formulated, it wasn't exactly uh, like I said, it wasn't that big a threat and it wasn't something you really wanted to consider. Um, but now he is, and now it's something you got. We got to deal with, and something we have to play around. So unfortunately, this tile set is not uh, very good anymore, and I really have to take it out because not only is Bector there, but we're talking about um, like spurns and think spurns and close calls and units like that are starting to become more prevalent, as well as uh, what was the other one? There was another major one. Oh, like um, what's her name? Edelgard, like you know. With the dam with the percentage damage reduction and all that stuff, so uh, there's a lot of these units that are coming out that are you know they can take every hit you're going to give them and and, and and not worry about it. Um, where before, like back then, the only really the only unit that was that strong was um, bike. Um, but like I said, so bike was there and, and we could deal with him obviously with like um, with Violet and and, and um, Sheeta, young Sheeta. But now that uh, Bike is here, now that you know, we got Bector, we got, like I said, we got Edelgard and all these units, um, they are all able to just sit there and tank. Uh, what's another unit? A unit that's been around for a while, but for some reason it's only now picking up a lot of traction is uh, New Year's Alphonse. He hasn't been around as long as Bector, of course, but New Year's Alphonse is actually another huge threat that, I have to, that you have to deal with, you have to plan around uh, on defense. Um, so it's important to consider all these things. So, like I said... Basically, the conclusion here is that this tile set is no longer uh, useful because they can just stand here and take all the punishment you're, gi you're giving out. Because originally, right, not only was it like, okay, so no one could, um, there wasn't a unit strong enough to withstand like a beating even if they were on here from all of these units. Um, it, it was, it's also good to, to funnel them into it. So knowing that they're going to be around here lets you plan your movements around to try to like do stuff to them. I mean, take a look at the way it's designed here. She can hit the square. She can hit the square. She can come down, fly formation, hit the square. She can hit the square. She can come over here and hit the square. And, you know, so it, it's it's all over the place. They can all just, like, it's not that hard. They can just hit here um, and deal with this, uh, which is kind of the point. You want them to be around here. Like, you want them to, to weigh in the trade of being here, dealing with all these units, uh, or being over here in another spot and then letting your units kind of morph over here and take over these spots themselves, right? So that was kind of the idea. But like I said, we're at the point where, we're, you know, there are units who can do that. So this tile set's not going to be as useful. Um, you can see that I still have it here because that means that I'm going to have to change up. Like, the like half of the reason this defense works is because they have to come over here through this side because these two blocks and this block are indestructible. So they can't come through here, which means that you're funneling them in over here. Um, and there's no other tile set that has. Let's go see if we can. There's no other tile set that has that in that certain that way. There's another one that has a a block here somewhere. I think it's abandoned castle. There's a block here, so I can probably put this like here or something, and put a bunch of stuff here, and make sure that don't come this way, which might be what I end up doing. But I think I'm like I'm just going to weigh my options and kind of think about what what's going on here. The one thing I've been thinking about most of all is maybe running a tile set. Um, like one of these, like something like this, right? Where like these are immutable; they don't, you can't move these. They just stay here. Um, they're they're in in that way. These blocks are kind of like this, right? But the biggest difference is flyers get over this. But what I what I what comes down to at, to ask now is how many offenses are you seeing out there where flyers are doing anything? You know what I mean? So that's why I'm I need to I need to sit down and consider a lot more of these um, tile sets. Because flyers, while I use flyers, flyerball on my offense, I have the ability to do that, which is one of the great things about having a bokey. Um, no one else is doing that. So I can leverage that and let make it harder for people to deal with my defenses by having this like, you know, set up like this. Um, so like I said, it, it's going to take more than just, oh, I'll, I'll just switch a tile set over because I have to rearrange everything and kind of think about how that stuff goes. And now that we have... Um, Bregan, it's like, you know, now I can consider a map like this, right? Have all my units over here on this side. Uh, and then Regan can't get in here either. Only she, she has to go through all this stuff or something like that or come this way. And it'd be hard because of these tiles, right? So now that Regan is a huge, like, turn one initiator, that's also another thing you have to worry about. So maybe you can run Grasslands where she can't just, like, run in here and hit you. Like, she'd have to come through this side. 
right? So basically you put this here um, and you block off all three of these, right? So there's a lot to consider here, um, but I think I should start leveraging the flyer formation a lot more because these trees don't obstruct me, right? They obstruct the enemy. They don't let them stand here and here without like serious strain or, or effort, but you know, flyers don't have to worry about that. So I, like, that's what I said. So like I said, I should really start leveraging the flyer mobility a lot more and more. So it kind of opens out a lot more um, interesting maps. So maybe I can try this now, right? Um, but yeah, so that's kind of one thing to, to, to think about. But yeah, so in terms of this, I'm going to I'm gonna be retiring this tile set. And if you can figure out a better, um, you know, terrain, a better tile set, then I, I think you should go for it. I think you should, we should start abandoning this one. Um, because like I said, the... the Solo tanking units are too strong right now uh, to be considering this uh, too seriously. The other thing is, even even if Bike, even if Vector wasn't here, there's still a problem of me not having any way to kill him. There's only really one way to kill him on this team. Um, they only scratch him barely, uh, like a well-invested Vector. They only like barely scratch him. Um, my out to Vector is ha has to be Pala. Like, there's no other way to do it. It just has to be Palo. Um, yeah, I mean, that, 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 yeah, that's it. So, and not even this Palo. I need to find a dive bomb, take off the flyer formation seal from her, give it to her, uh, and then figure out what to do with her. Like, I, I need to rearrange a few things, but she really needs the dive bomb here and the flyer formation. Um, or if not the flyer formation, then, like, maybe have her have, uh, where is it? Uh, well, I guess nobody has it here. Uh, like the, um, is it the ground orders or it's one that like makes it so people can like fly around them. Uh, it might be air orders. I think it's air orders. I need to give her like an air order so that they can still have their mobility, and she can still have her mobility as well. Um, but yeah, so basically the bottom line is like the only way to kill Vector right now, even off the tile set, has to be uh, Pala, uh, dive bomb. I can keep the I can keep the mirror strike, but. Um, it's not wholly useful. Uh, it's 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 gonna be like no one is useful against uh, is not gonna survive that. So like you know, like I said, one of the people that started starting to crop up a little more is the New Year's Alphonse, and against him, it still doesn't do enough to like <laughs> to merit having it on there, right? So the only other option would probably be um, what is it? Uh, would probably end up being the Heavy Blade 4, so I can get some true damage. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it depends on how much overkill you want in there, And but when it comes to Vector, there's no such thing as overkill, you really just need to get the kill and that's it. Um, the only other thing, like, the reason she's so good against Vector is that you can, she's there, she's got a lot of stats too. Um, Vector denies her follow-up attack because of his, uh, his Lance, right? So it denies this follow-up attack, but against Vector, she can stack up enough speed that she doubles naturally, so she can still quad Vector, not through her follow-up attack uh, of the weapon, but just because she can outspeed him. Uh, get the two attacks from the fact that her weapon gives her, you know, doubles, um, and then, you know, just quad him uh, with Dive Bomb before he gets a chance to retaliate, and that's really the only way you can kill him, is you have to kill him before he does anything to you. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what, what it comes down to. Um, I might consider, I might have to consider running her on, like, uh, something else. Let's go see what skill she has, actually. I, th I think I gave her another, uh, A slot skill. Oh, no, I gave her IO shield one time. Yeah, this is not a whole lot of us. Uh, but, like, Swift Sparrow or something like that would be kind of interesting, too, because, um, like I said... Sometimes, like, she barely outspeeds Vector. Like, there are some Vectors that are probably going to be faster than she is, and, and she won't be able to. Um, so that's something to consider as well, that you need enough speed. And, and the idea was that with her reducing speed from the attack speed rain, as well as granting three speed, as well as she's granting three, uh, four more speed, you know, hopefully with these stats, she can overcome the, the speed differential there and, and, and not be too, you know, not to, not be too worried about it in the long run. Uh, and she needs the uh, attack speed... Uh, she needs the attack speed, the goad. She needs a goad flyer so that she can give it to her. Make sure she doesn't die to anybody, like a uh, leaf who might, you know, might be able to tank through. You just want to make sure she can one shot everybody. So you want to capitalize on how much attack she can stack up. 
Uh, but in terms of the 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 structure, that's about it. Like I said before, um, you want to try try as much as you can to get a dancer on your on your defense uh, somewhere, um, preferably two dancers, because uh, it really like the, the it's hard to predict their movement. Now you can still predict it, obviously, but it's harder to when there's two dancers running around, you know, making their own calculations of who to dance, when to dance, and why to dance. Um, and you can just snipe out certain units and sniping out units is really what it's come down to now more than ever Which again goes back to the same conversation. We had last time of why cav lines are so important um, But other than that, like I said, I'm just still waiting on the, the last uh, violets so I have to wait for her to come back and then I'll get a plus 10 um, Not that it'll help anything. It'll just have 20 defense and, and 25 res which you know, it is what it is um, The good thing about the res though is if I end up running two Mirabilises uh, if I end up running two Mirabilises with her res, she'll have 35 res, which is pretty good because, like, because of Wind Sweep, she won't be, like, have, having to deal with uh, physical threats as much anymore because they can't counter you. So all you have to worry about is magical threats countering you, uh, in which case she'll have, you know, like I said, 35 res, and that's not too bad. I mean, it's not great, but it's not too bad, and they can't double you, <laughs> theoretically, anyway, because she's got so much speed. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Um... I still have to find a better... I had this on her to keep her from getting, uh, like, chilled, her, her speed getting chilled, but I think uh, it's come to the point where it's not that big a deal, and to get her to get the most out of her, I'm going to have to um, give her the flowers, and this will go... This will tie with her, uh, and then become useless immediately, because then the chill will not only hit her, it's going to hit her too. So I'm going to have to take this off of her, she'll lose some speed, and she'll get a bunch of other stats somewhere else, which... In all honesty, maybe I'll give her something that gives her attack and defense so that she can deal with Bector a little easier. Uh, but like I said, there's just really not a whole lot that can deal with Bector, period. So that's what that is. Uh, the, the last modification I'll have to do, and we'll see this in some of the uh, some of the replays, Camilla gets just dumpstered on by Regan. Like, yeah, it's, pre it's pretty bad. Like, she cannot survive a Regan whatsoever at this point. Um, yeah, like, th there's nothing she can do to Regan. Um, this isn't her final form, however, which is the point I want to make. This isn't like the final Camilla. The only thing, uh, the one thing that's missing from here, and it's not a whole lot, but the, the one of the two things that's missing from here is I eventually want to put her on Pegasus Flight, uh, because then she can reduce their attack uh, and defense by seven each, theoretically, if if she has higher res and enough speed. The thing about Regan is that she usually comes with Swiss Sparrow, so the Swiss Sparrow gives her seven plus Swiss Sparrow three plus the seven from the um, plus the, the the four from the Swiss Sparrow that people usually run in the in the in the Sacred Seal slot. So that's already eleven plus speed. She usually comes with like forty five, depending on how many merges. Uh, and then on top of that, on top of all that, if she initiates, she's coming with um, another like plus six attack and speed from her weapon itself, right? So for for uh, Pegasus Flight to work, you have to be at least within 10 speed. So you can be 10 speed slower and it'll still work, right? And I don't think she'll be within that range is the problem there. I think she's she's way too low still. Um, yeah, so who knows? Um, the, the, the only, some of the only solutions are like, for one, um, hopefully, like we're getting so many refines, but like, Resplendent refines, but like there's like so many units getting resplendent refines that like I don't think anybody really cares too much about like Nile. No, not I mean some people like Niles, but like really Niles, um, Young Tiki, not even regular Tiki. I think most people have like a, no, not Tiki. Um, yeah, it's Tiki, Young Tiki, not even like regular Tiki. I think most people have regular Tiki better. But anyway, it's all to kind of uh, air my frustrations at the fact that uh, Camilla doesn't have a resp uh, resplendent alt, which she like. She very much, I feel like she could. she's one of the ones that could use it so well. Just because she's been so power creeped, not only just in general, but she's also like been power creeped by the by Sateth. Giving her this would, would be a huge boon to her because then she'd have 40 speed at the very least. 44 speed because of her axe. Uh, she reduces speed here, so she's at 48 speed. Plus the speed from here, so she's at um, 52 speed. So hopefully, like all in all, it's not, you know... Like I said, it'd be nice if she had the Resplendent all, two, plus two to all her stats, a little more attack, a little more uh, res and defense. Uh, gets her up to uh, 39 and 39. It'd be nice if they were 40 and 40. That'd be pretty good. And then, you know, she'd be a really respectable unit. She'd be a unit that's like, 
good, like a, a modern day unit, right? Almost. I mean, her weapon is still kind of falling behind a little bit, but in terms of stats and everything, she'd be a very good unit. Uh, unfortunately, right now she's just kind of lacking. Uh, but again, like I said, it's it's my own fault. I, I chose this unit over something like a Sateth or something like an Ashnard, even though I knew specifically Ashnard would be the one should be the one you should go or go with. But these are things you don't have to worry about if you indeed chose Ashnard. I think because I'm pretty sure Ashnard can survive um can survive her no problem. The uh what's her name? I'm pretty sure Ashnard can survive Regan no problem. There we go, that's what I meant to say. Uh the other thing that, that that's kind of missing that I've been debating back and forth on is giving her a uh, distant foil uh, to give her more defense. Cause the, the defense still gets added on even against like if Reagan fights her uh, at adjacent unit, if Reagan fights her, she still gets the five defense and the five attack. The five attacks, not so important, but the five defense is very important against um, Reagan. Every stat point matters because when she's sitting here, she is going to uh, get five, uh, five res from this and five res from maybe another um, Mirabilis. If I end up running two Mirabilis, uh, she'll get a plus 10 to res. So basically, when the Seder Shell triggers, it's going to hit her defense stat. Um, so boosting her defense stat invisibly, like with the foil, uh, is going to be good, which, you know, that's kind of the point. Um, it also helps against things like, like, what's his name? Isn't that big a problem? Leaf anymore? He's not that big a problem. I haven't fought a single Leaf in a long time. Um, you know, might help against Bector, although he has to attack enemy, which usually you don't. You just kind of leave the Bector there. Um, but in any case, you know, the only person who kind of you're missing out on is you're going to miss out on the um, the New Year's Alphonse because obviously he's magic and he can just hit right through. But hopefully you have enough res to just like survive him and then your other units can just kind of barrel down against him, um, theoretically, though. He, he tends to stack up uh, an absurd amount of defense uh, and the only, you know, you know, I, have, I don't have a magic threat, which is one of the problems. I don't have a, a red. Uh, well, I do have a red magic threat now, but I don't have a green magic threat. Which would make, you know, Bector to some degree not as bad. Uh, and like I said, uh, New Year's Alphonse a little easier to deal with. But for now, this is where we're at. This is where we're at. Uh, so that's, so, so yeah, that's my point. Um, Camilla, to be as good an anchor as you'd want her to be, she really needs the, um, like I said, the Respondor Refine. I need to probably give her a close foil um, or a distant foil. And I need to give her the Pegasus Flight. And uh, I think she'll be she'll be pretty good after that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's pretty much all there is to it. I, I'm thinking about giving her the, um, a ruptured sky, but we'll see how that goes. Um, the, one of the problems I have with ruptured sky is I'm not entirely sure. I ran some calculations, but I can't remember anymore. I'm not entirely sure she can kill, um, what's his name? She can kill leaf on the counter attack unless it's iceberg, but I'm not entirely sure. I have to go back and take a look at that, but. There you go. That's my defense. That's what's going on with it, and these are the the changes I need to make. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a I don't have a wyvern flight. Uh, 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 no, a Pegasus flight. Uh, it's also, it's kind of a rare skill. But uh, as soon as I get one, it's probably going to go on her. Uh, this was here primarily to stop people from charging their ults, namely being Leaf, so that if if he hits her, even if like she wasn't like originally she wasn't supposed to survive or she wasn't supposed to kill Leaf, right? So Leaf would hit her twice. He wouldn't charge a special and he would just be kind of sit, sitting there out in the open, you know. He can't really do anything at that point because he can't really move to escape. And you lose one dance ability. You lose one reposition ability there. Um, but now that, like, the way she's designed now, the way she's set up, is that she can just kill the leaf on the counterattack, right? So charging, like, slowing his special isn't going to really do very much if he's dead, right? So now that that's fig solved... Um, I need to change this for, for either Pegasus Flight or, again, I think I mentioned this a while back, or a Hardy Bearing. Um, but I think the Pegasus Flight would be a lot better, and it really suits her like stat line a lot better. Uh, for the most part, anyway. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, what else? Yeah, I guess that's it. Um, Wyvern Flight would be pretty good on her. Um, unfortunately, there's, there's a lot of, we're, we're getting a lot of good B-slot skills, so like she's got this. Mm. Of course, um, Wind Sweep is amazing on Byleth. Uh, dive bomb, um, wyvern flight, and then Pegasus flight. the The point there is that it seems like they're finally giving us, like why, like uh, flyer formation is now a trade off, right? Before it was like, well, there's nothing else, just put wyvern flight or just put uh, flyer formation on them, unless you know certain units came out like, like her who already had this built in, um, 
her who you know you i gave we gave this to her because it was it's too good uh, but a lot of flyer units just had flyer formation just because there was nothing better to to give them and now there is so that's kind of interesting to see um how that's going uh but yeah so let's enough of that let's get to the defenses and uh what we really sort of wanted to look at here um yeah Broadly fans, Soth. Okay, so this person just lost uh, on lack of merges. It's not like they lost because of the lack of merges per se, but it's like they lost because they didn't come in here very prepared. Like if you're gonna run this strat, you really need to have a plus 10 uh, Soth, you know what I mean? Did we win on, nope, we didn't win on that. So let's take a look at how this happened. So they triggered the trap. Interesting that they didn't, like, he didn't just move up forward and uh, stand here. Because if you know this is a trap, you can just stand here, attack her. But maybe he maybe he tested that out on his own thing. Uh, and realized that, like, he still couldn't kill her, which would be pretty strange if he couldn't, but who knows. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess the last thing I could mention is that to survive Regan, um, you'd really need like a, a flame here somewhere so that like not only are you getting all those bonuses to defense and everything, like I mentioned, like the Wyvern flight here, may, if if she's fast enough to trigger it, the, the Pegasus flight, if she's fast enough to trigger it and the five from this, uh, the reduction in 30% might make her live, but even only slightly at that point, which is kind of worrisome. Um, but yeah, let, let's go back to this and see what happened here. Even even at low merges, like I said, even at low merges, I feel like this person should have won, but I'm not entirely sure what happened. This is kind of a mistake here. They already like she went for or she or he went for uh went for the healing tower and left him exposed. I'm not entirely sure what that's about. Like look at that, he's got uh, I'm not entirely sure. Who has panic? Where did I Oh this panic, yeah, I forgot. See this is what you gotta worry about. This is like a lot of stuff, like you have he has three dancers, and even that wasn't enough movement uh, or turns for him to do everything he needed to do because he needed to take this out. And he should, well, he should have prioritized this. I don't know why he, what he had with the healing tower so much, but um, it is what it is. Because now he's not fast enough to deal with her, who just doubles him. Didn't even need to double him. Okay, so at this point, he's, he can still make out, like, he can still win at this point, right? Because you can lose one unit. But let's see what happens, why he didn't win. So he kills Camilla. That's kind of obvious. He runs away. And now... Okay. I guess he just couldn't kill her? Yeah, I'm kind of curious because they, they still, they should still have victory. I mean, I guess if, like, she could kill her... Maybe she couldn't kill her, was the point. Um, then, I mean, she... I don't know what all this, like, swapping around. Because basically, you just use her to kill her. You, like, dance her, and then she kills her. I guess they couldn't kill her, either. Like, she could have killed her. Yeah, I mean, this person gave up for some reason. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I don't think they would have gone out unscathed. Like, they probably would have taken a lift loss. And it's early in the season where it's, like... You just restart and, and, and hit the hit the ladder again or use the ladder. So let's go see how we lost here. Okay, so I already see how exactly we lost here. Um, Lynn did what Lynn does. Uh, this is also something to, to consider. Is like, I'm glad that I have Byleth. Um, I already had Palace, so it's not like I needed another duo hero to like capitalize on the duo's hindrance. But you really want a duo hero um, to not let them do what's about to happen here. Which, it happened here anyway, because, I, I mean, I have the, the dual hero, but it still happened, right, is the point. Uh, this is why you kind of want, like, someone with a lot of movement on your team, because they can just come over here and snipe all this stuff and not worry about it too much. Uh, just like that, so she... Oop. And then she... There you go. So everybody's safe, and now she can dual skill, and you're about to see what happens. 
so she doubles so here's another example like 27 and 27 is 54 right if I had another plumeria my Camilla just on just on five extra HP from another plumeria my my Camilla would have survived that that's not including the wyvern flight which again she's got this and I think she's get speed from this too uh, no, she doesn't get speed from this. I mean, she gets the base speed, but you can already see it uh, right here. So it's already calculated in. But she gets speed from this. But if I like the Rivalin Flight and the, uh, like I said, the close foil, we might have been able to reduce her attack so much that, like, we would have survived that. Um, and then she would have attacked again, but she wouldn't have had so much uh, impact. So now she can, she can attack again. And then she dances, and then she goes again. Yep. Uh, and then whatever this does. Oh, I guess that gives her another <laughs> movement. So there you go. Uh, in one turn, she took out half my team. Now, again, would that have gone any differently if Camilla had survived that? I'm not entirely sure what they would have done. Uh, but again, here, so, you know, basically they just destroy uh, Sheeta. So we can see here what happened. We lost, you know, Lin did Lin things. Uh, this is why Lin is so powerful on offense. Uh, very good carry if you uh, wanted, if you were considering it. Uh, but hopefully that that shows you guys uh, another option. Uh, so let's see what happened here. Um, it's kind of weird. It's an interesting build. Okay, let's see what happens, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, so being that Altina is a bonus unit this season, I guess they were pretty confident that she could uh, take care of everything. Let's see what happens. Yeah, for one, uh, she's not fast enough to not get windsweeped by Byleth. So 25, and I think this one should kill her. Exactly 35 damage, so we almost missed that by one point. Um, yeah. Okay, and then Byleth, like an idiot, exposes herself, which is not too bad, but uh, you really don't want her doing that. Interesting that she took this fight, that this person took this fight, because you can see ahead of time that she would lose. They didn't necessarily lose, but you didn't want to not die either. Um, okay, so he died there. She died there. It's interesting because I think, yeah, okay. Yeah, because now Sheeta is just going to destroy Reagan. Yeah, 51 damage. Okay. There you go. That's what the drawback is for, to kind of like pull people back without like flipping them over entirely. Um, and at this point, Bike cannot kill... Uh, Sheeta. I guess Sheeta's just gonna kill him. He should one-shot him. 65, yeah. Ooh. And because, yeah, because I get, uh, he gives her desperation. He gives out his, his enemy's desperation. Yeah, 47. Just one-shots her. You can see Pala, how strong Pala is. Even without having to quad everybody all the time. Uh, I'm not sure why they attacked. I guess just for the sake of doing it, because they already lost. Like if if they haven't left already, then I'm not sure why. Yeah. Okay. So then at this point they just leave. Um, and that's the strength of a uh, plus six Sheeta. Uh, so that one kind of lost because of like just archaic. Um, it fell for the trap of like let's leave a unit on the on the defense tile and we'll be fine as well as like running with Vector. I'm not sure why you would take Vector into this team. Maybe they don't have another unit yet. Who knows? Uh, okay, so we, yeah, we should we shouldn't be fighting people like that anymore. Tropical treat. So we lost to this team, and I'm kind of curious of, as to what happened. So yeah, let's take a look here. So theoretically, Regan just comes in here, destroys. Camilla and then the team falls apart after that is what I'm assuming so 30 damage with Seder shell is what 45 and then another 30 
Yeah. So she didn't really have a she didn't really stand a chance there. Uh, and that's kind of why I'm thinking about running like on a tile set that has trees or something like that because it's a, it's an easy way, it's a cheap easy way to block um, Regan from doing stuff. Because Regan, for those of you who who have yet to use her, which I mean I think you've all had her, right? You should already have a copy of her because she, they give you one for free. Uh, and we can kind of see what happens here. Um, yeah, she just destroys everybody. Oh, it's kind of oh yeah, she's she's yeah okay. I forgot that she also, like, in addition to having the vantage against everything she's um, effective against, she also just has regular vantage. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, hopefully this kind of shows you all how powerful Regan is to just, like, be able to go in there, hit some, almost basically guarantee the kill with Seder Show, and then leave um, with the, what's it called? Leave because of the Kanto uh, with three movement, right? I think, you know, hopefully it's a good example of how strong she is and how, like, your defense needs to be able to sustain uh, Reagan hitting it really hard like that. So, oh, and I forgot she also has the low speed defense. So ultimately what I'm kind of what we're to take the takeaway from this uh, for me specifically is that probably running Wyvern Flight isn't going to be a very good idea. Well, not necessarily that it's a bad idea. It's just that. I'm not gonna out. I'm not gonna reach that. Like, cause like I said, you have to be ten. You have to be at least ten speeds slower. And I think uh, Reagan has weighed so much speed. Basically, she has ten extra speed on top of her speed stat, which that's not even counting in if anybody has like a speed boon, right? Or they're boosting up her speed stat with like you know visible buffs or anything like that, right? So I think as much as I want the off, cause. The, the cool thing about uh, Wyvern Flight is that it gives you uh, serious offensive capabilities as well as defensive capabilities, right? Where it's like, uh, you reduce their attack, so basically you boost your defenses by 7, and you reduce their defense, which basically gives your attack, you know, 7 more. Um, I think I might have to just, like, sacrifice that and go with the guard bearing, ultimately. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to, we'll see. Just because, like, the first hit is the most important from Regan because she has the special charge and reducing. So if she hit me for 45 there, reducing that by half is, what, 20, 22. So she hit me for 22 and then another 30. So 22 plus 50, 30 is 52. If I had another Mirabilis, I'd have um, max uh, defense there. I'd have I'd be able to survive that. But as it is now, I still wouldn't be able to survive that with a 50% damage reduction. I'd still need the close foil and another Mirabilis. The, the other, I don't need the close foil if I have the other Mirabilis, but I, you know, like I said, it's still the close foil is going to be useful to have. Um, but it would still be very disruptive because she'd come in and hit me and then leave, and then that triggers all my units to run around and start flying around. Now, the good thing is her special won't be charged after that. It'll be up to three again, so she won't be able to hit me that hard. Um, and my healing tower should theoretically just heal up the damage that she failed to execute me with uh, that entire turn, so... That's something to consider. Oh, but yeah, so we basically, like I said, we basically lost here. Uh, we got outmaneuvered. Um, let's take a look at this failure. So we did pretty good, even though we failed here. Let's kind of see how, how this went. Because this is about, I'm, you know, I'm assuming this is a pretty even match. Uh, which is kind of interesting because they do, in fact, have... So basically they have... I'm not sure how they didn't just defeat me here. Because they have Hector for one. They have her for two. Um, they have her here to stop the dancing. So basically what I mentioned earlier, where you want to have a dancer on your team is basically been nullified. Um, and, and, and thanks to, thanks to, uh, I guess this is another point to bring up. Thanks to Fjorm and, and, uh, people like her. So, uh, in light season, whatever her name is, I've got what the, the other light unit is. Uh, they both have the, um, the isolation effect, which, you know, you can't have two, I mean, you can have two of the other light unit, but. You, having two dancers is basically just to ensure that, that for one, you have more even, even more movement, but for two, that you know you don't get isolated so easily. Uh, but let's let's see what happens here. I'm actually curious to see uh, how this went so poorly for them. Uh, why does he have movement? They get rid of this. Okay. This is, oh, I can see why. This is not a properly invested uh, Hector at all. Not only does he have a, a res boon, um, he doesn't have special fight special spy, uh, special fighter. Which is like one of the most dangerous things to have on Vector, period. Uh, and then this is just an even res wave. I'm not entirely sure what's up with that. So this is not a really very well invested um, Vector, but 
I mean, they, they obviously still beat me, so like I'm saying, Vector's just a very strong unit. So she just one-shot me. And then they wasted an entire, um, like, sacred, like, the whole sacred slot was wasted on on this one. You could have had something way better there, which is kind of interesting. Like, Kranya doesn't do a whole lot in this team. She's not even a CC Vantage unit. Like, she just sits here and does almost nothing. So I feel like you could have paired her, paired him up with it. Like, for me, for those of you who have seen uh, some of my offenses, I have him paired up with uh, Winter Erica. She has the, uh, the Sacred Seal that gives her movement. And then she also gives him uh, plus six to defense, to six to res, and six to attack, and the speed doesn't matter. Because the weapon gives you plus six to attack, and then she has... No. She has attack opening, which gives him the six to attack. And then the, the weapon gives the highest attack person uh, defense and res. So all, this, all the important stats on him have uh, boosts. Um, so her by herself, not only can she heal him if he needs to, she gives him stat bonuses. And if they get panicked, it doesn't matter because he, you know... He cleanses the panics from his refine. Uh, he also has a special spiral, um, and he has you know mobility by having her on that. So it frees up his not only his C slot, uh, it also frees up his um, his S slot. So that's kind of something to consider. So Reagan destroyed Camilla, and somehow we're still um, hanging on for dear life here. Hmm. Okay, so Minerva just destroys Regan somehow. I guess not somehow because Regan's not that strong when she's being attacked. She's her greatest strength is attacking. Um, but so that's how that went. So of course Minerva gets uh, destroyed here. Uh, and then I guess Byleth destroys. So I guess it was just like a, a mishap in like positioning or, or they didn't expect certain things to happen the way they did. So two and let's see, can she kill? Last time she did 35 damage, so I'm assuming it's going to be similar. 36 damage, so yeah, basically the same thing. Um, so there's that. 39 damage. Um, five. Yeah, okay. So even without the Raptor's Sky, she's dead. Okay, so that's very interesting. So ultimately, we still lose here because I I, I don't think we have anyone to deal with uh, to deal with Bector regardless. Um, let's see what. I wonder. I wonder if I guess yeah, she she can't really kill anything other than, like anything she's not effective against. She she doesn't really do very good against them. Like not much, <laughs> not much there. Okay, so seven, and she dies. Wow, she dies literally straight up to uh, Naga there. Oh, I got the. Uh, forgot, <laughs> I always forget about the vantage somehow. Um, but it didn't do me much good anyway. Yeah. So. And then obviously, uh, Mirabilis isn't gonna do anything. So this one turned out pretty even. Um, funnily enough, like Vector did basically nothing there. Like I'm not sure why he was there. He was just kind of there to be there. Uh, cause it was all just Reagan, uh, and then just kind of like uh, Altina as well. So, kind of interesting. Um, let's go look at some what happened here. Mm, I'm assuming they lost because they relied on Ike on bike here. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, so I think Regan's gonna do what Regan does again. So this is actually condition because this is a Gale Force Regan, I think, right? So 36, so 36 by two is still gonna kill me regardless, even if she didn't have the Seder shell. Uh, oh, she has Ignis. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. It's weird that you would take off the satyr shell and give her ignis. I'm not. I'm, I have. No, I, I have no idea what's going on there because she doesn't even have that much high defense. That is a weird calculation. I don't know where they pulled that from. 
Okay, so it should make... Um, oh, I think we lost this one, and it said I lost none because it was on the... Yeah, yeah, okay, never mind. So yeah, let's see how we lost here. I'm actually kind of curious. So obviously he's blue. Hmm. However, his insane lack of res is like... <laughs> what's going to cause this to happen? Um, and then I think she's going to get danced. Did she already get danced? Yeah, she's going to get danced and then kill him anyway. Uh, so, obviously that um, Byleth paying off, even against blue units, without having to be a red check. Without having to check greens, is what I mean. Okay. So, 28 by 2, she's obviously going to die. And this person left. I guess he was going to attack her and then realize that she was just going to die on a one-shot. She can't stand here or here. Well, she might be able to, right? You don't know which one's the trap, which one isn't. But they didn't want to take that gamble. They just decided, you know, we lost already. Because uh, she's going to die, I guess, is the idea. Because she has to kill her. Otherwise, she's going to come over here and kill her anyway. And you've already lost a lot of lift at that point. And then Byleth can obviously take care of, uh, you know, bike pretty easily. And if not her, then obviously Sheeta can. Uh, so it's very interesting. Um, yeah. Success. Oh, yeah, it said success. Okay, I don't remember. So basically, the next, like, two are successes, and the last one's a failure. So let's go take a look at that one in a little bit. We can kind of see that a lot of these strategies aren't really, like... Like, a good player wouldn't employ whatever they're doing here in, in a lot of these cases, right? Um, let's go see what Guinevere does. Like, some of these are just kind of, like... It just seems like they're just doing whatever they have. Oh, another Tethys user. Let's see if she has the same build. The Wings of Mercy, that's kind of interesting. Uh, is that a plus 10? Yeah, plus 10. Tamari, and they didn't They didn't go with... I guess it's like, yeah, yeah. 52 res, that's quite a bit. Uh, let's see. So, they did the obvious thing. They just like pop these things real quick. Then we look at... Guinevere. Now, Guinevere is just going to like dumpster all over Camilla. Poor Camilla. I like Guinevere's... Uh, <laughs> little like anime looking uh, attack animation. It's just like this giant like laser beam. Um, so here's another one. Okay, so I'm not sure... Did they think she was just gonna... I guess they were okay sacrificing her. So, take 60 there. Uh, she gets to move. Hmm, interesting. So, obviously, uh, Plumeria has like an insane amount of um, res, so it's kind of hard to like barrel through that. And she can hit me harder because I don't have as much res, is basically what the bottom line is. So, um, the point being that... Uh, Byleth is mainly here to, to kill um, physical units, right? Given the wind sweep and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, it's not like it wasn't obvious already. It's just it's one of those things to consider was that, like, against other mages, Byleth isn't very good. I mean, she's not bad, like I said. It's just that, you know, she has a specific purpose, and if she's not doing that, then, you know, it's not going to go very well. Mm, more dancing. Uh, of course, um, she's going to die. So this person surrendered, I guess, because primarily, I don't think they have anyone to kill her. I mean, she might be able to, but she's kind of weak. Uh, and they're all kind of fighting around this healing tower is another problem. So, you know, presumably she's going to hit her and, well, well she's not going to die, I guess. She'll probably hit her and she'll die. And then um, she, yeah, I'm not totally sure. And also on top of the fact that they probably didn't want to lose any other units. So one, two, three, four, five. I forgot who they, the first one they lost was. Oh, that was Guinevere already. So losing another unit would cost them um, lift. So that's kind of how that went. Uh, and turn. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. We actually wiped out an entire team here, which is kind of crazy. Uh, and as you can see, like, this person let the whole team be wiped out because you can't, like... This is near the end of the season, right? So you can't really... They probably used up all their escape ladders already is the problem there. Oh, no, they're still here five times. So I'm not entirely sure why they just sat here and, like, took this entire beating. Very, very interesting. Uh, Seder Shell. Here's Zaltina. Okay, so she has Disarm Trap, which you kind of is what you want on um, on Layla. 
uh, then she swapped out, and then for some reason, I'm not entirely sure. I guess it was just to get that initial damage in, which wasn't totally useful because of that. Uh, now we have Minerva over here by herself on the defense tile. 47, so Byleth survives by the skin of her teeth from all the all the wards, all the ward stacking. Um, which means that he has to waste an attack to kill her. Not only that, he has to waste the um, he or she has to waste the uh, the satyr shell, which makes it easier to kill her by other units. Okay, let's take a look at. She's probably she's probably gonna kill her, I think. Yeah, forty seven. She didn't kill her, but uh, she did a decent amount of damage. Oh, and then I guess Camilla came in for the steal. I, it's funny because I had a hard time finding like an accessory to put onto uh, Layla as well, but it was just weird that like someone else put that stupid uh, ponytail. I mean, maybe they want it there, but like that, that feels like one of the only ones you can put on her. That doesn't look too bad, but even that looks pretty bad. I just don't like that ponytail in general. I guess it's just my my personal uh, view of that. Uh, fortunately, she has an iceberg charged, so she can hit her hopefully hard enough to kill her. Forty three. Yep. So Iceberg and Bonfire, and those are pretty strong in the right hands. Was it Iceberg? Yeah, it's Iceberg. It's not Gleesey's. Uh, so here comes her. So again, this is another situation where reducing uh, that damage she was taking by 5 because of the close foil would have been pretty useful. Okay, so what happens now? So one of the interesting things is, is how dumb the C, that like the CPU can't really know certain things. There we go. So and then this guy just dies. But the fact that like you would probably want to reposition uh, Minerva a little bit so that um, the uh, what's her name so that uh, Young Sheeta could like come in and kill um, Edelgard. Now, that wasn't necessary because uh, Minerva could handle Edelgard, but like in general, that's not going to happen in a lot of the cases. Like, Edelgard's very strong. Uh, so ideally, you'd want Young Sheeta to do that for you. Uh, so that, you know, not only does Young Sheeta have effectiveness against... It's, th it's triple effectiveness is what the point is there, just to make sure she dies. Because, uh, and so, like I said, in some cases, Minerva's not enough. In that case, it was, but she has effectiveness against axes. She's already red, so she's effective against green. Um, and she has effectiveness against um, armors, so, you know, that's just something to, to consider. Uh, and replay. Okay, so we just, like, destroy that entire team somehow. But you can kind of see how disjointed these people are. They're not, they're not, like, really thinking things out. They're not strategizing. And the one time, the times we lose, they kind of are. So, like, that first Lin one, and here's another Lin example of her just dismantling our team. Uh, there's two Plumerias here, very interesting. So that's why she has such high speed. That's also something to consider is um, I probably should have saved because I, I got two plumerias and I merged one into another one. I probably should have saved one uh, to, to set up a team where there's two plumerias because speed is like very important usually. Um, yeah, so like even though I didn't want to lose uh, the panic smoke, the panic, uh, sudden panic on the Tamari, I should have made a team where it was like two plumerias and no, um, no Tethys whatsoever. Uh, Tamari doesn't have sudden panic. Tethys has sudden panic. I just like, I call Tethys Tamari sometimes because I'm dumb. Because that's basically it. She's just a Tamari holder and a, and a sudden panic user. Anyway, the point is, um, I should still make a team where I can forego the sudden panic and then have two two uh, Tethyses, so that I can have even more speed. Basically, it boosts my uh, my what's her name? It boosts my my Felicia up to 54 speed, which would be pretty good. Um, and here, I mean, we can kind of go through this, but hopefully it, uh, it's quick so we can just see that um, Lin does what Lin does. Um, so there we go. Uh, Lin goes there, she gets danced uh, again. And then she activates her harmonized skill. Oh, she gets danced again, I forgot. I didn't see that.
so basically Pala beats her, but the problem is you can lose a unit and still um, be okay. So um, they lost some lift, but they still ultimately um, just kept going in the end. So. So here's a Plumeria attack, and then the other Plumeria hits her, and she's still not dead. And then um, <laughs> lastly, here's the uh, the Regan. Ooh, with the Seder Shell. Uh, and then there's no way that Plumeria can survive any of this, so yeah, she's dead. And that's that, so... Uh, fortunately, if this, if this had not, like, if this wasn't caught by the lift loss control, this would have been a decent loss, because... At the very least, she took one of their units, so we're not losing as much lift. So, either way, it turned out all right. But like I said, like based on like just looking at these, you can see that there was a lot of people who weren't really like into Aether raids doing Aether raids, right? So that kind of, I feel like that kind of helps support my theory of like just a lot of people were kind of coming out of the woodwork who aren't usually that into Aether raids, uh, trying to get into the new Heavens Arena, just giving it a shot, see if they can make it up there, um, right? So that's that, that's kind of what I find interesting. Um, and I guess that's it. I mean, there was not a whole lot else uh, to go over here. Just kind of talking about how the defense went, um, some suspicions about why this season was so odd in terms of placing and, and matches and why they were so easy on offense and why they were so strangely... Um, what's the word? They were kind of disorganized on def Like when they attacked my defense, they were kind of disorganized. And when I attacked their offenses, a lot of them were very, very like poor defenses is what I'll say. Um, but yeah, and then and additionally, I, I, you know, I went over, we went over here, what, what needs to change in this defense, um, to make it more successful. Uh, the biggest thing is I need to find some way to make, um, Camilla survive stuff because otherwise she's going to die constantly every single time. Not to mention as time goes on, like not all Astra units are worth merging. So take your, um, Naga. Naga isn't really worth merging. She's not like having a plus ten Naga doesn't add anything to your team, other than if you're running her as like a, a speed chill and a soak chill, a speed chill and an attack chill soaker, right? So she can just absorb them. And a plus ten, that's basically she's gonna do what she's gonna do, right? Um, but it's not really worth investing that many orbs for someone to just sit around soaking chills, right? So at a plus one, she's fine. She does what you need her to do. Uh, Plumeria again is another example of this, where at a plus one or not, I mean. You know, I said plus one on a Naga. I mean, like, no merge Naga is basically all you need. Plumeria is the same way where, like, no merges. She already does her job, which is basically dance, debuff the whole team, minus four. And, like, the sabotage on top of that is just a bonus. Uh, it's a very good bonus, but it's just a bonus. It's not that big a deal. You're not going to go plus ten her to get her maximum res uh, just to get everybody, just to sabotage their speed a lot, you know? Um, so at a, at a non-merge, or at least I, I like there at a plus one, you're good enough on Plumerias. In terms of merging, so the question is, who do I... Because you, you do want to have at least one plus ten Astra Mythic unit. So the question comes down to, who do I who do I merge if not those two? Well, you have two options, right? You can either um, plus ten your uh, Altina, which I'm planning on doing. I mean, I only have like a plus three or plus two. Um, but eventually, as I as I summon more and I, I get more, you know, units and all that stuff, I'll probably start focusing on plus tening my Altina, um, because all the stats work on her. Uh, the speed helps her when she fights against units with low speed, like very tanky green units. So things like um, uh, what's her name? Things like Surter. Things like uh, I, I mentioned earlier. The what's her name? Um, sorry, I blank a lot on these things. Edelgard. Um against like very green tanks like she does pretty good and then on top of that she can deal with like thrasiers who are always on defense and a bunch of other units that she can fight against so while making um altina like your main cc vantage unit isn't very isn't a very good idea because of how many uh, blue threats there are out there it's not the worst idea and it's something you can invest in so not only are you are you investing in getting a higher score you're also investing in having a decently powerful unit. I mean, it's hard to deal with uh, Altina's ability to just double no matter what and then Vantage double. Um, so, you know, having a, uh, a merged up Altina is a good option. But the other option, obviously, is going to be Regan. Um, and I see a lot more people running Regan, um, plus tending their Regans, because of the hit and run strategy. Like, Altina, the problem with Altina is that what she has to do is sit there and tank everybody and kill everybody. 
problem the reason you don't want to run her on that is because she can't because she's blue right there's a lot of stuff she won't be able to um properly fight against uh so in that sense it's like it's very limited if you plus 10 her but with Regan, the pro the thing with Regan is that she's always going to be useful because there's always going to be some unit she can just come in here, snipe, and then run away, right? There's never going to be a situation where she can't just do that. Um, you could have, like, another carry be your main carry and then have her just, like, snipe someone who kind of moved out of position and then run away again, and then you're, you're solid after that. Um, so, yeah, and especially, like, a lot of people are running Vector, so basically just have... Uh, Reagan, run in there, snipe the green, like, you know, one of the green threats that are on there, run away, and then, you know, Vector has more free reign, right? Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically the bottom line there, is you, we're probably going to start seeing more plus 10 Reagans than any of the other um, mythic, Astra Mythic units for plus 10-ing, because Reagan's probably the most useful. Um, and she benefits a lot from, from the stats. Um... She, honestly, she, ben she benefits a lot from all the stats. Like, one of the things with Altina is she benefits from the attack, defense, and res. Speed, obviously, one out of, like, plus 10-ing them, if you get the stats total uh, boost in one stat, like the speed boost from 0 merges to 10 merges is not that high. But uh, still, that's a lot of wasted stats. Like, every time you merge her and she gets a point into speed, that's a wasted merge, basically, because her speed isn't really useful on anything. Um, so that's kind of why, like a plus, like a plus ten, um, a plus ten, Regan is going to be like significantly stronger, just because every single stat, speed, attack, defense, res, they're all useful to her, because her two offensive stats are there to make sure she gets the kill, and her two defensive stats are there to make sure she doesn't die while she's trying to get the kill, and she has enough stats to run away, right? Um, but yeah, I mean that's kind of that's kind of the main point I wanted to make there. Um. Not having Seder Shell basically means that, like, having more stats also means that she doesn't have to run Seder Shell and you can actually go with the Gale Force build uh, and then just run around just hitting people and running away. Like, that's two, that's two, that's two units you can basically take out if you can. Um, and then, you know, your main carry unit can come in and just wipe whatever's going on, you know, on the outside of that. If you're running like a bike or something like that or a vector, you can deal with everything else. Um, so that's that. Uh, what else? Yeah, those are the main things. Um, like I said, be wary of Regans. Regans are going to be a lot stronger. They're going to be, uh, basically, if you're having a hard time with Regan now, it's only going to get worse. As people start getting more merges, people start getting more excited about the unit and seeing, like, you know, a lot of people never ran the hit and run strategy before because, you know, on a surface level, they just didn't want to or, you know, whatever, for whatever reason. Um, but now that, like, the hit and run strategy has been kind of, like, you know, IS has put it into our hands by giving us a free Reagan. Um, more people are going to try it and realize that they like it or realize that, like, they, oh, man, I should have been doing this the whole time, right? I was using my other strategy for whatever reason and not this, right? Um, so that's an interesting point to make. On light, on light offense, you have several choices. You have, what's her name? You have that new unit that has isolation on her. Uh, she's... She's a pretty interesting um, unit to be merging to plus ten, but basically with her, all you want to boost is her is her defense. So all the other stats are kind of wasted because you're not going to use her to do anything other than just sit sit around isolating people. Uh, there might be sometimes like because like Naga as well, right? Sometimes Naga takes out a unit here or there for whatever reason, um, and she might be able to do that too. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, the main thing you want with her is her defense. So at one, I think you're you'll be fine. But uh, if you really want to get over everything, then I guess you can plus 10 her. I wouldn't really consider it. Uh, Peony doesn't actually gain anything from merges either because she's a dancer. She doesn't do anything other than dance people. And at a, a non-merge, there you go. You're basically solid. So um, no one, you're not going to be merging up your Peony. So that's not a target. The only other two targets to, to be focusing on merging up are going to be, in fact, Air, which I think a plus 10 Air could do a lot of good. And not only that, but her stats really give her a lot of flexibility. So you can make like a plus 10 air and then have her be very offensive, or you can make a plus 10 air and have her be sort of more defensive and have like a huge res stat, maybe run her with some sabotage or something, uh, and a Tamari dagger or something like that. And there you go, there's a support air that you got a lot of max benefit out of at a plus 10. Um, or the other unit obviously is going to be Freya. Uh, plus 10 Freya is something that like strikes fear in the heart of like a lot of, a lot of teams. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot else to say. It's just 
plus 10 Freya is something that we're going to all have to make sure we deal with because you're basically that basically maximizes your your win potential because now instead of having to worry about like oh, I'm going to plus 10 my carry unit and I have to plus 10 a um a light unit, a light mythic unit. Well, I could those can be one and the same and have it be Freya. Now Freya is not without weaknesses, of course. Freya can lose to a lot of things. Uh, one of the things if you guys have seen uh, Actress's video, Freya can lose to uh I don't have a Freya. I'd, I'd be showing her right now if I did. Uh, one of the things you can lose to is going to be the uh, Ursa. Ursula? I think it's Ursula. Or Ursa. No, I think it's Ursa. Do we have Ursula and Ursa? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but let's go take a look at her. Um, she's got a lot of weaknesses is basically the point. It's not like she's invincible. Um, and that's not something That's not something I, I of course, ever want to like champion for any unity like I, I talk about Vector a lot but even he's you know just he's beatable to a large degree uh one unit that i was kind of thinking about myself too but um Akers beat me to it when he mentioned her is ursula uh because her tome blair wolf blue crow tome has effective against cav units and later on she gets the broad leaf fan effect on it um not that you're gonna get a lot of debuffs on the freya but just the fact that you have a magic cav effective unit even though she's um, weak against green because she's blue, as you can see on a low merge, um, Akra showed that she she wins a lot of matchups against her anyway. I think you'll have to have her like at a plus ten or like high merge, and like some serious investment to beat out another high merge serious investment uh, Freya. But I think that the bottom line is that she can do it, and if you're running cav lines, which a lot of people probably should these days. Um, She'll do good to uh, she'll do good to um, kill her easily. Um, the other thing that I guess is important to mention is it's interesting that we have had Astra Mythic defense units. All the defense units have been there hasn't been a single Cav unit, and there hasn't been a single Cav offense Mythic unit uh, until Reagan and Freya came about. Now. Am I saying, will we get a defense astromythic unit? I feel like we will soon, but it's going to kind of... I think part of what's kept... Uh, what's kept uh, defense or astro... What's kept the AR defense uh, so balanced is the fact that there are no uh, mythic defense units, right? There's no mythic dark, no mythic uh, anima that are, that are cav units because... Right now, one of the biggest weaknesses is is you have to run a bunch of calves, but you have to dedicate two of those slots to having the um, having the mythic units because not only is it good to reduce the lift loss, like a lot of people undervalue how heavily that stat re like that stat increase affects a battle, right? Like having a team wide plus five res to everybody from Plumeria is it's no joke. Like it's very strong to have that there. Uh, that's kind of one of the, the weak points of the cav line is that you you do still need to run those two mythics um, and there are no calves to run them on so you have to have four calves and they have to carry the weight of you know fending off so many units with two kind of dead weight characters uh, fortunate we, we've been fortunate enough we on the uh, the flyer ball team have been fortunate enough that we have uh, two flyer Astra mythics, two flyer, uh, two flyer defense mythics, um, Triandra on, on, uh, I think it's, what is this, dark? Triandra on one season and Plumeria, Plumeria's on Anima, right? So Triandra, no, not Plumeria. Ugh, my names are, Mirabilis on, uh, Anima and Triandra on dark season. Um, so we've been kind of, you know, lucky that we, we got those, um, and you know, if it weren't for that, I think like the the fireball would be like, I would not have gotten so many defense wins if it weren't for Mirabilis being a flyer and and fitting into my fireball. Now she doesn't do a whole lot of flyer stuff because she doesn't have flyer formation, so she can't like run around you know, you know, dancing a lot of people. But um, it's 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 easy to see how like how impactful she's been in these fights when you compare it to my other team, the dark team. There's no dancer on this team, and this team gets constantly like just dumpstered on like. It's the same team. Everything's about everything's basically the same, but the fact that we're missing one dancer just makes this entire thing kind of fall apart. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to realize that you know just one dancer is makes a huge difference. You can see here I have a 
I was I wasn't really building a cab line. None of these are like plus anything. I just kind of was like, hey, I, I just kind of realized I could do it if I really wanted to, right? Because um, we could just boost her, uh, give her some more stats. I actually have a, a attack speed push four to give her if I wanted to. Uh, she's only plus three, but like if I wanted to invest into her, I could probably at some point. Uh, and then I have like a plus ten Lin. She's not that good, but uh, she's better than you know, I'd rather run her than like um, what's that guy? Ugh, he's, he he has the the candle wax bow. I forgot what his name was. Yeah, he's he's in that like that sheet. He's like a Halloween unit. But I'd rather run her than her than him. And like just just in general, like it's like oh I could do this if I wanted to, but obviously you can see here it's not really something I really cared about too much. Um, but the point being that like just having that ability to to not only have like a mythic on your team, but have it be like best in slot, right? It's like what other dancer am I gonna use on my defense besides her? Like, there isn't really a whole lot. Um, the only other one I would consider would be, like, uh, Liliana, or Lilina, I think. The flying the, the flying beast dancer. Um, but I can't, like... I'm not going to plus 10 her, because she's a, she's a five-star unit. And I can, you know, not easily, and not like I necessarily will do it. But eventually, the, the goal is to get as many merges on your mirror builds as possible. Uh, so that you can get more defense reduction. Uh, lift reduction. Um, but before I, I guess I start merging her, I really do need another Mirabilis because there's really no other, like, another, who else would be useful? Thrasir would be useful here, of course, um, who else? Thrasir, um, Life, or Lif, Leaf could be good. Uh, he's over here, you can see him. There he is. Leaf, Lethal, lethal Swordsman. Um, so anyway, the, the point is that, um, Everyone else has had a decent, like, if you're running, like, an IP chain team, an IP team, then you've got Thrasir, right? Very strong unit. She just nukes everybody. If you're running a flyer ball, we have Mirabilis. But if you're running a cav line, one of the things that's kept cav line in check is the, like, again, the same thing. The fact that you need to have these, um, you need to have these mythic units on your defense, and none of them are cavs. Um, unfortunately, like I said, the fact that we have now a cav Astra offense unit, um, and a cav uh, light offense unit means that we're probably going to start getting cav uh, cav defense mythic units in the future. Which, like I said, even with these checks, cav line is already going to be the, is already one of the strongest teams out there. Now you take out those checks and you just give them cav um, defense units, and we're in for a rough time. Is all I got to say to that. Um, but yeah, so. And that's it mainly uh just take from this video what you can about you know what you want to apply and the, the biggest takeaway to me is change your your change your defense team or not your defense team change your defense tile because for those of you who are using this and i feel like a lot of people have been using this uh even before like before i did before i started making videos is what i mean i'm not like oh i influenced a lot of you or a lot of people out there but um it looked like a lot of people were using this already and i think at the time it was fine but i think now we have to really um move on from this uh, this tile set and the other is make sure you have a good anchor um, but uh, for those of you who are uh, a lot more success oriented you you already had that covered I, I this is something I'm struggling with just because uh, I decided to, to struggle with it myself um, but yeah I mean I think in general like Sateth is just an excellent choice not only was he a four star focus in that banner but uh, you know if not you can just keep getting more Sateths later uh, and he does a lot of support on his own um, plus it doesn't waste your grails. One of the things about the grail shop is while it's like free to play friendly to some degree, it's also like, it takes forever cause we don't get enough grails. Like I'm still at a plus what, like eight Brunya. That's not even counting like how many other <laughs> grail projects I need to make. So I, you know, I got gangrel. I still need to finish. I need one more, um, one more, what's it called? Let's just go down here to the, uh, heroic rail shop here so i mean there's one right there plus 10 hannah i gotta start working on now that's gonna be the that's probably gonna be the next one um yeah so after brunya i'm probably gonna start working on hannah uh, so i need more brunyas i need hannah's oh what's his name his name was rolf oh, i knew his name it was rolf something like that yeah um i need one more of this but i'm waiting for ghb to come back uh i'd like to make her but i'm waiting for her ghb to come back or wherever she came in she might not even have a ghb honestly uh, i think she does um what else? Uh, Gangrel, like I already mentioned, Gangrel. Patrine, I'm waiting for her GHP to come back, of course. Uh, yeah, like I said, Hannah. I, I actually, funnily enough, there's a banner going on right now. 
Was it right now? Yeah, I think she's on there. This banner, I, I was like, I remembered she had spurn. I was like, oh, hell yeah, I need a spurn. And I was like, I went to summon, and the first... I, I haven't used any orbs on this. All I did was the first free summon, and the first free summon was actually the Chris. So I got the spurn kind of just <laughs> luckily there. Um, so basically my Hannah is ready and good to go. I, right now, let's go look at her. Traits and equipment. Change traits. Where are you, Hannah? Like, it's pretty crazy because Hannah at a plus one is already just like a dangerous monster uh, with Spurn. Here she is. Uh, speed. So she's got 48 speed. It's actually... What was it? Yeah, 48 speed. Already. Uh, that's not to mention if you give her the... Um, the... Summoner support. With summoner support, she's at 50 speed. With the spurn, it's like you just you're not gonna be able to die. But not to mention, she also has the deck swabber, which reduces their attack by five. Um, so basically, she can't die, and she's gonna hit people theoretically decently hard. Uh, that's the only problem I, I have with uh, Hannah is she doesn't hit as hard as you'd want her to. Uh, she can double, so she can hit people decently hard, but um, her single target, her single attack is not as good. I think her attack only goes up to like 56 once you um, max merge her. Um, but yeah, so, you know, with this and the, uh, and the what's it called? She's already at a 48 speed, so you are outspeeding uh, quite a huge, <laughs> a huge amount of the roster at that point. Uh, but yeah, so I haven't given it to her yet because obviously I need to uh, HM farm. And I'm also just going to hold off until I actually have like... There's no reason to give it to her now because I'm not going to use her in anything. I'm using. I'm going to use her for um, for what's it called? I'm going to use her for arena because she scores pretty highly. Uh, but I'm not going to use her now because I'm not going to give her the spurn now because there's no real reason to. Like there could be another unit that comes out tomorrow and it's like, oh, spurn would have been way better on him because I'm probably only going to get one spurn. I'm never going to. Well, I'm not going to say never, but I don't imagine I'm going to pull for more spurns at any time soon. So the fact that I got this was like, okay, well. It was, it, it's it's it was meant for Hannah primarily, but there might be a chance that um, I don't even have a plus eight. Damn it, there might be a chance that uh, another unit comes out, and I really care to merge them. Though I don't think that's I'm not I I really doubt that because I mean Hannah's already not only like just aesthetically just awesome, but you know it's Hannah, she's cool. Um, but also like I like I said before, I was already building the plus ten Echidna for this very reason, and then suddenly out of nowhere Hannah comes out and it's just. 10 times better than her at a like at a plus one she already outspeeds her by three without even a speed boon now if she had a speed boon she'd be uh 45 and she'd be at 48 um but as you can see like i was already kind of grooming her to, to to be there at the point where she was uh uh my my plus 10 green axe uh unit for arena um but yeah, like i said Am I, do I, I don't think there's going to be another green axe, or not, not necessarily green axe, but there's, I don't think there's going to be another unit that's going to come out that's going to be like, oh man, that unit, I want a plus 10 of that, and I'm going to give it the, uh, the spurn and everything. So I think it's, it's a safe bet to make, but, um, why bet on it? Why be impatient is the, the bottom line, right? I don't have a plus 10 Hannah, I'm not going to have one soon, uh, because I have to worry about making Brunia first, and it's already taking forever as it is. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically what the bottom line is. Was hopefully we can uh, earn more um, Grails by being in the Vault of of, uh, of Vault of Heaven or whatever. Um, oh, is it Vault? See, that was Vault Gate or, or Heaven's Arena. <laughs> Gosh damn! Um, but hopefully we earn more Grails uh, by being up there, and I can um, max out my Brunya sooner, and we can start. We can get started on um, boosting the uh, the Hannah. Um, and Patrine, obviously, like I said, GHB unit, but I really wanted to make Patrine. Um, but yeah, that's it. I mean, not, not a whole lot, whole lot else, just kind of going over some, some thoughts and whatnot. Um, just a general discussion, meandering video. Um, good luck to you, to those of you out there. Hopefully we all get into, um, the Heaven's Vault, whatever, and, and, you know, it rains, uh, heroic rails up there. <laughs> and, uh, we all get as many, um, many, uh, uh, grail units as we want. Um... But yeah, so that, that, that was it. That's it for me today. Uh, I don't know if I have any other videos coming out. I already this is like the third video I'm making today. Um, yeah, I don't know. I might make a video talking about where I wanna what I wanna do with the channel and going forward, doing 
I, I've been thinking about branching out and doing more stuff, um, but I don't have a lot of time right now. So like, I'm just doing videos on what I'm already doing rather than like starting something new and making videos on that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, hopefully you guys all enjoyed some of this and um, we'll see you guys when I see you guys.